The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedoms, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up. To stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host. Today I'm joined with a special guest, uh, an activist, basically. Uh, somebody who's actually lived in Massachusetts and came up to New Hampshire because she couldn't uh, in live free, like we supposedly do here in New Hampshire. The reason I asked uh, Kimberly Morin to come on my show is because she's on a couple of shows on a regular basis, the political buzz with Gerard at large, basically uh, telling us what's going on in the legislature. And uh, Jeff, uh, what was his name? Chedister. Chedister, and he's on WGIR, yes. correct? And you're a, a featured guest as well. Yep, every couple weeks. Well, I want to welcome you to speak up, and you're welcome here anytime Thank uh, you. you want. Um, I made it clear that I, I never ask people's party affiliations before they come on the show. That's just something I know I don't do. But you seem to be very well versed. When, when I'm listening to you, it sounds like you've done a lot of your homework. We've had many guests on the show. We've talked about Common Core. We've talked about corruption in our court systems, the Attorney General's office. Uh, robo signing, you know, mortgage fraud, and as I look what's going on right now, it seems I don't really recognize what's happening in our capital. It's almost like a scorch the earth syndrome. What, what is going on? I think because they have control of the house and of course the governor's mansion, they are, and they know they can squeak by some things in the Senate, they are just trying to push everything through that they possibly can. Now, for the record, you're an independent. Yes. Okay. Yep, always have been. Okay. Uh, and a couple of questions I wanted to ask. I know that there are six bills that are coming up that have to do with Common Core. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be a plague uh, in our country now. I mean, California is bucking the system. Uh, Who is it? Illinois? Indiana. Indiana. They, they said no more. We don't want it. Yep, they terminated it. And now there are six bills that have to do with Common Core. Can you talk a little bit about Common, common Core? Common Core is a set of standards, quote unquote, um, that they want to push across the country so every state has the same standards, as opposed to now where each state has their own standards. You know, they have to take the certain tests, but they, how they teach is according to the state standards. So some states have higher standards than others, like New Hampshire. Right. Um, actually, New Hampshire standards are higher than Common Core standards, which is one of the reasons they shouldn't even be thinking about putting it into place. And, and why are they doing it? It seems like a centralized everything. Our, our lives are being centralized by the federal government, whether it's Common Core, with the education system, whether it's the healthcare system, and I'll get into that after. But uh, so you say it's not a good thing. Or it's lower than New Hampshire standards. Yes. Um, it's lower than New Hampshire standards. Um, the way it teaches children is a different way than they're used to. I don't know if you've seen any of the math problems. Honestly, I, I'm not very, I, I tried to figure out some of them and I don't know how they came up with it. I'm a numbers geek, mm -hmm. aced calculus, loved algebra, and I look at some of these problems for first graders and I have no idea what they're asking. Right. So, and that's a, what's, what's happening and experts have come out and said that some of the problems that they're giving to children in, you know, at too young of a, le a grade, you know, that the, their kids' minds can't even understand or solve math problems that way. So that's one of the problems. It's, so it's making, it's turning kids who used to love school and love math into kids who hate school and hate math. 
Right. Kids that were getting straight A's are now failing because they don't understand these concepts and they can't. Their brains can't understand how to solve these things because they're not ready for that physically yet. Right. Even parents can't solve some of these. You know, they, they teach a kid to subtract 7 from 14, but they do this really strange um, sort of object type of way to do it, and it doesn't make any sense. Why? Why are you teaching kids that way at, in first grade? So it's, how it's did, hurting how, education. How did our state come to did, – did the legislature vote on Common Core? No, the Department of Education decided they wanted it. Now, how many people in the Department of Education dis, did that? Um, I think there's only a few that actually made that decision. Right. It wasn't, they didn't ask teachers, they didn't right. ask superintendents, they didn't ask school boards across the state. Uh, it was, they made that decision. Now, is there federal funds that back this Common Core? There were federal funds from the stimulus called the Race to the Top. I refer to it as Race to the Bottom. Um, we didn't get those federal funds, but there will be funds tied to it in the future. Like if you want, um, in order for us to get certain funds, we had to put this into place. Mm -hmm. Um, would they tie, say, something totally undermine to it, like the highway fund or something? No, that? no, no. I think it's just specifically to education. Okay. Like if we tried to get, I know, I think Manchester tried to get waivers for something, English as a second language. Um, I don't remember exactly what the waiver was for, but it would have cut funding for, program, for education for the entire state. So this is how the federal government basically jerks states around. We're going to dangle this big carrot of, of federal money so that we get our way, and then after they suck you in, <laughs> sometimes the funding just doesn't happen to be there. Well, that's going to end up probably happening in the future, but yeah, what they did was they gave this carrot, mm -hmm. the Department of Education took it, and now parents, children, and teachers are getting beat with the stick that, that was dangling from the carrot. Right, and they had no say in the matter. They had no say in the matter. No one had say in the matter, mm -hmm. um, and the Department of Education didn't even know what was in the program, really. The program's never been piloted, Never been tested. So what I'm seeing here is a huge pattern. You've got to pass something before it, it ends up. Before you know what's in it. Before you know what's in it. That's not, that's not representation. That's, that's, that's criminal. Right. And I can't imagine going to, to Concord and saying, I'm going to pass something before I know what's in it. And it's happening on a routine basis in this federal government. And I don't know about locally. Our, our, well, obviously Common Core. But, uh, Common Core is a good example. Um, th there seems to be a lot of bills being passed that they, I don't know if they don't read them or they don't bother researching, but the bills are based on statistics and facts that just simply aren't true. Are they having public hearings on some of these bills? They have public hearings, but right. apparently it doesn't matter what facts are brought forth. Um, certain people just don't want to listen to the facts. The bill might sound good or maybe it makes them look good, like they're helping people, when in fact they're actually hurting people. Right. Now you're hearing lots of complaints about Common Core. Is that from teachers? Teachers, parents, kids, across the board, even unions are complaining. This is going to hurt teachers, which are, of course, represented by the unions. Right. So this isn't just... How will it hurt them? Well, first of all, it's hurting how they're teaching. Right. It's changed how they're teaching. It, it, I can imagine it's painful to teach kids in the class, plus the testing. Now, if... They have to figure out the math, too, don't they? Yes. <laughs> well, they're being taught. Right. They've had to have tr trainers teach the teachers how to teach Common Core. And, but the thing is, they're going to have these smarter, balanced assessments, um, which they're trying to opt out of now. That's one of the bills, or delay. Right. Because those haven't, we don't even know if those are in, in accordance with the state law. Mm -hmm. Because the state law says you have to have, the assessments must be valid, appropriate, and objectively scored. Common Core aren't. These mm. tests are not. And honestly, a couple other states have done these tests already that, you know, went on to the program earlier, and the kids failed. It was miserable. It was a failure. The teachers were miserable. And how are you evaluating teachers and the kids on these tests? Now, with, with these, these uh, examples of, of people saying, hey, this doesn't work, is anybody listening? Well. I mean, on the federal level. Are they saying, hey, you know what, it's, this isn't working? You know, I don't think they are on the federal level. I think they're just ignoring everyone at the federal level, and they're leaving this up to the states to fight these battles. Um, that's Can, why we, our legislature is fighting it. That's why these bills are in place. Right. The Department of Education doesn't want to hear anything. Um, the lead of it, Virginia Berry, doesn't want to hear anything. She's actually <clears throat> extremely rude about it to people.
who are fighting it and telling her stories of kids suffering under Common Core. So here we got a, a, a system where people are voicing their concerns and nobody's listening. Correct. And I think that... Well, no, it, I should... Some people are listening. The people who brought these bills for The bureaucrats are not listening. Right. The people, no. the, ins the institutions are not listening. No. Uh, and and, and I, th I find that when, when the government starts turning a deaf ear is when it needs to change. Right. The people that are in those positions, if they're not listening, if they're not coming up with remedies to, to alter, to change, to fix, uh, to, to meet the standards, there's got to be a problem. Now, I think it was Representative Laura Jones that offered uh, a bill to let, let's get out of this thing until we know what's really in it. Yeah, there's several, um, actually all Republican reps, who offered up bills to delay it, to make sure that um, kids' information isn't being sent to the federal government, you know, really detailed information. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they need certain information. Um, Seems like everybody's spying on us, even our kids, <laughs> the NSA, you name it. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that the medical history is being... Uh, sent to Washington, or who, who's watching? Who's who's gathering all this information? It's being sent to the federal government. Um, Why? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying. But this you, is the things I'm trying to understand. Yeah. I know we had Anne Marie Banfield here. We're trying to talk about it. But why do they want all this information about us? What are they doing with this stuff? In, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's, I, no, but I don't think anybody can answer that. Maybe they can, but they're not going to tell us the truth. Now, no, none of the Democrats are, are bucking the leadership on this at all. Actually, I think some are. Really? There's a, I can't remember which one that was actually sponsoring one of these bills um, when I was researching these bills. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Democrats will. Um, it seems to me, as you know, I listen to the House floor votes. I listen to the legislation being talked about, um, hearings when I can, um, and I watch all the votes. And it seems to me on a lot of votes, not all of them, it seems to me on a lot of votes, the Democrats are just told, this is how you're voting and vote this way. Is that good representation? No, it's, that's not representation. Right. Um, it, it, it's hurting the state. And in the case of Common Core, this is hurting our kids. This shouldn't be political at all. One of the things you might notice that when you go to the Capitol, this is what, at least what I noticed, that whenever there's a bill, uh, the Democrats in lockstep, they do not change, but it's the Republicans that are fighting each other mm -hmm. because they're a party of ideas, if you will, or the libertarians, they're usually the libertarian Republicans or the, the uh, moderate to liberal Republicans. And they're up in the well and they're fighting each other and the Democrats already know what they're going to do. Right. And I, I find that alarming because you, it would be refreshing to see a couple of Democrats going at it, you know, just to say, hey, look, you know, we're not sheep. It's right. not one person telling us how to vote for the rest of the people. And, and I, I find that alarming. I wish, I wish that wasn't that way. I wish there were independent Democrats that would say, you know what, you know, go take a hike. I'm going go, to vote with, with these people. I think on occasion there are some, mm -hmm. but they're sort of you know, pushed off to the back Yeah, they don't get back the committee. They don't, right, they, right. Don't, um, they don't get to sort of put those ideas out there. Right. And, and I, th I find that a trap, a real trap. One of the other things I wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, Medicaid expansion as well. I, uh, I, you know, here I'm going to be a Republican, and I'm going to just say that the Republicans blew it on this. I, I, I have no idea what they're thinking. Uh, the, the, the Senate, I'm sorry, if I were in there, I would have voted no, no, no. In my opinion, <coughs> when, when Obamacare got passed, People were under the impression of certain things. You were going to be able to keep your doctor. You are going to be able to keep your insurance. Your premiums were going to go down $2,500. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to keep your, your uh, hospital. All of those were a lie. Mm -hmm. So now, what does the Senate do? It builds upon a lie, Medicaid expansion, which is just an expansion of Medicaid. Uh, and of, Obamacare. Of, of Obamacare. Yeah. So if you build your house on sand, it's going to fall in, into the ocean. What are they thinking? You're an independent, so I can ask you this. Uh, I, I can I, ask anybody this. Yeah, you can ask. Yeah. I have, I've asked them. Yeah. And um, I think the reason that the Senate did this was because there was a couple of Republicans who were going to vote for it no matter what, no matter what it was. 
Um, and so what other Republicans, Bradley and Morse, did was try to make the Obamacare Medicaid, Obamacare Medicaid expansion not as bad. Right. That's their reasoning. Whoops, sorry. And what, what they should have done is let those Republicans take the fall for it. Go ahead and vote for it. Take the fall for it. They shouldn't have tried to make a bad bill better because it's a bad bill no matter what you do. And the thing is, the majority of people in New Hampshire have always been against Obamacare. Mm -hmm. The majority, <clears throat> right from the very get-go. And the, people, the number of people that approve of Obamacare, the minority has shrunk. All right. And, and it, it's worse and worse. The more we learn about this, this exactly. albatross, it, the, the more we want to get rid of it. Let's get rid of Obamacare. And now what happened is it basically, it's forced upon us at the state level. Right. So great, we got forced on the federal level by Democrats like Shea Porter, who didn't listen to her constituents. And of course, Senator Shaheen, she did the same thing, didn't listen to her constituents. Again, the majority of New Hampshire. They voted Obamacare in. And now we have people who voted it in again at the state level. So. One of, one of the things that I heard, um, Kimberly, was the fact that, you know, well, w when the federal government doesn't pay the 100%, then we'll either get rid of it or at the end of three years, if we have the courage, we'll get rid of it. Okay, wait a minute. Where was the courage to say no? Right. Where was that courage? If you don't have the courage to say it now, you're not going to have the courage to say it. We need people in the Senate, we need people in the House that are going to say no. Because grandma's going to have to pay that bill. It's called taxes. Right. And it might be an income tax. It, their, their retirement will be taxed. Something will be taxed. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their, their money's going to shrink. These are not good ideas. To grow the government is expensive. Especially in a state, this is live free or die New Hampshire. This is supposed to be a small government, government state. This is one of the biggest entitlement programs being pushed on this state right. you know, in years, <clears throat> if not ever because we don't know how big it's gonna grow. One of the amendments they presented today, because there was a floor vote on it today, and of course it passed, um, this amendment didn't pass, um, they tried to put a cap on it of how many people oh, would be eligible. Right. They wouldn't, they, it, would, it failed, they right. wouldn't pass it. Well, they want it to grow because then there's the dependency, and, they're, they're, and once you have a dependent class of people, then you have a voting, a, a voting base. You know, I was uh, uh, on the treadmill at uh, one of the, the gyms I go to, and. Uh, um, White collar, the wife of a white collar worker, you know, banker. You know, he's, he's looking for work. He uh, tried to get onto Medicaid, not Medicaid, but uh, uh, Obamacare. They said he didn't qualify. I don't know what that meant. So they said, you need to go on Medicaid. Now, for a banker, you know, that you got to go, you're going to push him towards the program. Mm -hmm. So when you push these people that are pro on the program and say they got cancer or they're dependent upon it, now you've got a dependent class. This is, in my opinion, this is modern day slavery of right. everybody to the federal government. Well, and that's one of the things about Obamacare's Medicaid expansion in New Hampshire. The majority of people actually work mm -hmm. and they pay for their own insurance currently. So you're gonna take all these people who are currently independent of the government and make them dependents of the government. Right. How can anyone see anything good out of that? No, and, and th that means they can control your life. Now, I heard there were at least eight hospitals that, that will not, if, you have, if you're on Medicaid, they, they're, out, they're excluded out of this Medicaid expansion. Is I think it, it's eight or ten, yeah. Ten. Eight or ten, uh, which is even worse, obviously. Yep. So that narrows your scope of, of where you can go, and there are doctors that say, we won't take Medicaid. Right. They, they're killing the system. It wasn't really that broken. They, it needed to be tweaked. But it seems as though the Democrats can hang on their mantle. They destroyed health care in this country. Right. Um, and it, well, the thing is, with this program, it's at first going to pay for private insurance for these people. So it's going to pay the, the insurance they're already paying. Mm -hmm. It's going to pay those premiums for them and their deductibles um, and whatever certain costs under that. Uh, but that's more expensive than Medicaid. Right. So then there's going to be some fridge program. And it, it's just. It's ridiculous, and who, it should have never been put into place. Who really benefits? Is it Anthem? The, well, I'd, if Anthem is the only one that's on this, but I think the people who benefit are the, I want to say the people who are getting it, but no, because then they're government dependent, so that's not a benefit, in my opinion. Right. Um, they're not getting the Cadillac plans that they, you know. Medicaid? It's going to be the same plans that they have, which could be better than what some of us have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, 
And if someone is pushed onto Medicaid, the doctors are the worst. You don't have as many choices with doctors. Um, Look at the VA. Yeah, I mean, and Medicaid um, outcomes are worse for people than who don't have insurance. Right. I mean, that was proven in a study. How much is this going to cost New Hampshire? Several hundred million when all, and when all is said and done. So how are we going to pay for that? The, the Democrats have long wanted an income tax. This is probably going to have to be it. We can't afford to tax businesses anymore. Yeah. We already have the highest business profits, profits tax in the country, I believe, the highest if not the second. Right. We already have an extremely high meals and sale uh, room tax, yeah. um, one of the highest in the country. So you can't tax the businesses anymore. Plus, we'd actually like to tax them less so we can get more here. Right. Well, I, I have a feeling that businesses, you know, we're not a right-to-work state, so nope. we're, if the, if the uh, price of uh, um, energy continues to, to go up, that also is a deterrent for you know, businesses to come to New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. If the property taxes are too high, why, why come? So they're leaving less and less reasons why people need to come to New Hampshire. Right. And it's, it's going to create uh, a deficit. Well, a huge deficit. This is one of the problems I have. In 2012, Democrats ran on jobs and economy. Mm -hmm. They ran on that. I know. But they ran on that. And they haven't done anything but push legislation that's going to hurt jobs in the economy. Have they, yeah, have they done any, promoted any bills which will attract businesses? Well, they killed bills that would attract businesses that Republicans put into place. Mm -hmm. They killed them. You know, they wanted to lower the um, meals and tax uh, rate meals tax by one percent. That's not that much money. No, but it we would did help. that. We did that in 2010 or 2011, and then somebody got the bright idea to table it. You know, it come on, it was just one percent. It was one percent. Right. Uh, but yeah, the whole idea is, if, if you can lower the taxes, get more businesses in, that draws more income for for the rest of us. Right, and it's more jobs. It, which also draws more income, you know, because people spend in the state, or maybe people will move here and buy a house. Now, some people believe in the holy cow or the holy grail of uh, uh, a casino coming in, and that'll solve all our problems. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. And, and I'm wondering if a deal was made. I don't know. Just wondering. I'm just, yeah. I'm just wondering. That's because been put out there, but I... There's, there's, no, there's no reason that, we, that the Republicans should have uh, agreed to this. None, unless somebody wants a casino. Income tax is going to hurt our, our, our state, and it's going to hurt. And now they're also talking about a gas tax. Mm -hmm. 22 cents? Um, it's increased by 4 cents. I'm not sure what it is now. Oh, okay. I think it's, so, so I think 22 cents. No, 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 it's 4 cents. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay. And that was a Republican idea. All right. <laughs> well, the whole idea is, though, if they would just keep to the, the laws that are already in the books, we wouldn't really need to make much more of an increase. Uh, Josiah Bartlett said, uh, wrote something about that, that we're not even obeying the laws that we have on the books. Well, exactly. They're, they're not, the Department of Transportation takes in a few hundred million dollars a year in revenue. Mm -hmm. What are they doing with it? I know some of it, the problem is, some of it gets taken out of there for, and put into the general fund, which is one of the problems. It's a slush fund. Y yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll, we'll take some money out of here and we'll take it there and we'll just raise the gas tax here. Right. And uh, so another thing that we're, that's really bothering me is, you know, they want to increase the minimum wage. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. So first of all, there's only 5,000 people in New Hampshire making minimum wage. 5,000. Really? That, uh, that's according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the last report from 2012, which they reported on in 2013. Mm -hmm. There's only 5,000 people making minimum wage. The majority of those people are school-aged or married. So a married person is probably just supplementing a full-time income. School-aged person is probably going to school working part-time. Um, and, and they're mostly, the majority is part-time workers. Um, so 5,000 people are only making minimum wage. Um, the majority of hourly workers, the average hourly worker wage is 20-something an hour. And the majority of people hourly at the lower end, it's, it's over $9 an hour. Um, what the minimum wage will do is create barriers to people who are unskilled workers to getting into the workforce. Because why is an employer going to pay more for someone to do a job when they can find someone with, 
more experience. You know, if someone has no experience, right. why are they going to pay them? So it's going to create barriers to getting into the workforce. Um, it actually could kill some hours. It could kill some jobs. As a small businessman, when I used to have employees, I don't have employees anymore, but you'd have to pay for your uh, workers' comp, mm -hmm. your liability insurance, uh, Social Security. Everything just increases. It's not just the little 2 $3, whatever extra it is. It's all the, the gross sales. It's right. the gross uh, salaries. All that goes up. So you start, you, you start taking from this one and 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 this one. After a while, you just suck the life out of New Hampshire. Right. And, and that's the thing. That's the other thing is if you're a small business, you have a, a, usually a low profit margin. Right. So if, you have to, if you're forced to give people a raise when they don't actually deserve to get a raise from their own you know, work, working whatever or mm -hmm. how long they've worked there, um, that has to come out of your cost of goods sold. So you might have to raise your prices, and if you can't raise your prices because the, the consumers won't buy it, buy your product, then you might have to cut hours, or maybe you can't hire that other person you were going to hire. So you have no problem attacking a Republican either? No. Democrats, Republicans. <laughs> if you're doing something wrong to, to the state that I'm living in or right. to the country, right. I, I'm going to, it doesn't matter. Right. So you, you spend hours researching all this? Things, you, you go to the Capitol, you go to the, where, where do you do all your research? Uh, I do a lot of research online. I read all the legislation. Um, Are you just a junkie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Pretty much. Right. And then, of course, you, are, are you involved with any particular group, Is any uh, conservative liberal group or anything like that, or are you just that independent? Um, no, I, I actually interact with a lot of different groups mm -hmm. um, in New Hampshire. I'm actually starting a, um, a group called Informed Women, Informed Women's Network. Okay. Um, it's for women who are fiscally responsible. And that's just getting off the ground, that's starting, but it's, it's a group for women, it doesn't matter, it's nonpartisan. So it's, it doesn't matter if you're independent, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, it's, uh, the focus is on being fiscally responsible. Right. And basically what I'm doing now is holding um, representatives, no matter what party, to be fiscally responsible, right? Um, it, because that's really the most important thing. And survey after survey shows that the most important issues to voters are jobs and the economy. Jobs and the economy, and I'm just going to throw one in there, is justice as well. Mm -hmm. If we don't have a justice system that we can believe in, I think you just throw out everything. Right. You, you have to know that, that when you're, you're, our justice system is actually going to uh, be, be fair and honest. Mm -hmm. So. I have 22 seconds. Can you, give me, can you close out our show for us? All I have to say is, whatever you do, pay attention, be informed, and hold your legislators accountable for what they're doing to this state. Good or bad, thank them if it's good, but get on them if it's bad. And you know what? Remember in November. And that's it for now on Speak Up. And uh, thank you, Kim, for coming on the show. Thank you. All righty. Thank you for watching this episode of Speak Up. We also want to thank our sponsor, Center for Redress of Grievances, LLC. You can reach them at www.centerforredress.com. If you want more information about Speak Up or want to be a guest, you have something to say, contact us at speakupnh at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. Until next week. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer 
solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.